This video was inspired by the comment above, which one of you heroes left on another one of my videos today. In my unique position as an unaccountable dipshit you see on the internet, I feel I have a responsibility to address some of the very real workplace dysfunction many of you may be experiencing and say the quiet part out loud. Related to this comment, while I think we can all agree that everything you see on the internet is true, in the off chance that there is some hyperbole about this particular project, I'm not going to address it specifically. However, this does raise two of the most important concepts in not only technology, but any form of human collaboration team size, and information dissemination. I've done a lot of thinking over my career about both of these and have some thoughts you can feel free to ignore after you flush and leave the stall. We're going to have to tackle these in two parts. In this video, we're going to focus on team size. To start with, I want to talk about the strong voices problem, which is the dynamic of highly confident and vocal participants in teams that include quiet people, introverts, and cornerstanders. I want to make this as clear as possible. I fucking love the quiet people. I've worked with developers whose neurodivergence has both made it hard for them to feel comfortable elaborating their thoughts while giving them a truly superhuman ability to press the right plastic buttons in the most optimal possible order. They make fantastic teammates. However, these people are susceptible to getting steamrolled in discussions by the strong voices. This is not a good thing. I can say this from experience as a strong voice who for a long time thought I had the best ideas because no one challenged me only later to realize they were holding back all of their genius because they just didn't feel like participating in a Lincoln-Douglas debate about blueberries and watermelons again. So with that in mind, let's talk about team sizes using, of course, a helpful feelings-based matrix. A team of one is pure efficiency. It is the Highlander holding Excalibur of team sizes, unless that one team member is anything short of LeBron or MJ perfection. And then it's a nightmare of unsupportable jazz riff code and a time bomb that will eventually bring your business down. If your objective is success past this week, never ever enable a team of one. A team of two can be pretty good. There's a little less risk of a single person owning all of the knowledge and decisions, but it really comes down to the collaboration dynamic between the two people. And there's still some risk that neither one of them have any idea what the fuck they're doing. A team of three further reduces the previous risks while staying extremely lean. This is also a nice team size for a senior, junior, super junior combo if the senior is a solid mentor. It also allows for complementary skills differentiation among the team members. Four to six may be optimal, but depending on the specific team members, this is when you may also start to experience the strong voices problem, as this is the size when the quiet people begin feeling like every time they talk, they're Meghan Markle at in-laws Christmas dinner. This is also the size where you may start to experience the bully problem, where you have that one overstrong personality that negatively impacts the willingness of others to provide perspective. At 7 to 10, the bully problem fades out because enough people will recognize it and Law of Averages says that at least a few of those will be comfortable telling Timothy to shut the fuck up. This team size is a good balance between efficiently keeping everyone up to date while also making the meetings manageable. However, at this level, your quiet people might entirely fade into the background, requiring separate smaller follow-up discussions to ensure their perspectives are represented. 11 to 15 people is my gray zone. I accept this team size as a necessary evil to address problems created by breaking this into two or more teams. For example, multiple people having to be part of each of those separate teams. However, at this point, the meetings stop being where real work is being done, questions are getting answered and ideas are discussed, and instead they're just about status and some occasional awkward off-topic cheerleading from an executive stakeholder who actually showed up for once. And here's the important part of this video. Above 15 people, you are doing it wrong. Nope. Above this level, no one is winning. I could give you a thousand reasons said with different words while wearing a variety of tiny hats and using different inappropriate accents, but it all amounts to just no. The great writer Alexandre Dumas once said, for some reason first in French, something to the effect that one thing that humbles me deeply is to see that human genius has its limits while human stupidity does not. We've all heard of the Hippocratic Oath in the medical field, and there's one for scientists that broadly addresses ethics. For technologists, I'd like to propose the Dumas-cratic oath, which states, yes, of course Dumas was right, but unlike anyone organizing or participating in a 500-person scrum meeting, let's do our best not to prove it again today. 